Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to get back on the Yamaha 250MX project. Uh, we're going to kind of work out the brake situation in the rear, try to try to get that finished. Uh, we've got to, we've got to pull the front forks off, go in and uh, put a little bit of a shim in the uh, the steering limit. You've got a, a limit block underneath where the forks come across and we need to limit them a little bit more. It looks like about a sixteenth of an inch on both sides, maybe a little bit more, but uh, we need to do that to keep from banging into the tank when we go lock to lock and we also have to move the tank back a little bit and in doing that we'll we're just going to work really on the front mount. Uh, I'm just going to limit it a little bit too, so how far the uh, tank, uh, the rubbers, can be pushed in. And between that and the uh, limit, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? The, uh, the fork limit uh, mount there, uh, increasing that a little bit we should be able to compensate enough in order to get that uh, the forks not to hit the tank and that's the main thing uh, i don't think it's going to take away hardly anything as far as your uh, lock to lock movement so we'll just we'll see where that takes us but we should be able to get pretty close to uh, i'm i'm saying done with the modifications and we're still going to have to tear it back down, plate some bolts, overhaul the forks, just just some little things like that. But before we do that, we'll probably get back on a couple of the other bikes and kind of try to get them a little further along too. So let's get over here and get started on the 250MX project. Okay. I've I found a piece of material here that even has a little bit of a bend in it. I'm not going to utilize much of it, but uh, this is kind of what I need. And I just need to get rid of about the top inch here. So my first thing I've got to do is get this lever off of this spline shaft. So that's going to we're just going to have to get in there with a the whiz wheel and and uh, cut it out. Of course, this piece is ruined, but got more of them if I need them. But I think this is this is going to serve as well for that. So I'll go ahead and get this thing cut off. Okay, get the lever cut off here, and I've just got these little ears here that I'm just going to try to. knock them the rest of the way off. So I'll just work on this and then I'm going to put it up in the lathe and trim this down. Okay, I just took, and, took the grinder and grind off the uh, really sharp points there. And now we'll just bring it in and kind of clean it up and see where we're at. It looks like it was ground down smaller than the uh, original shaft. See, the original shaft was quite a bit smaller. It, uh, it's flame cut a couple places there, but we'll just cut it down to uh, a nominal size there 
uh, you know, something, uh, I'm probably going to say a half inch or something like that, just so that we can drill a hole in the new piece. Let's see where we're at here. Uh, it's bigger than half. Looks like maybe uh, five eighths. Yeah. A little bigger than that too. What, what have I got that I can get in there? 11. We'll go for 11 sixteenths. And if that doesn't clean it up pretty good, then we'll go on down to uh, five eighths. That way at least we've got a We've got a, a hole or a drill that we can, we can use. Okay, that's pretty close to 11 sixteenths. Keep it as big as we can. I just about got all the, the uh, edit, other cuttings out of it, so uh, I think that'll work real good. Okay, here's all the pieces of that one, and it would have went about like this, and this one, nice snug fit on there, and that'll get welded like, like it did on the other one, only the other one I believe was welded on the back, <clears throat> but doesn't matter as long as it's welded. So we're down to just about the, uh, that length of that one now, and Let's see, we were, this would have been about like that. So that's about what we needed to take off. So we'll go over there and see how this thing is going to fit now and which direction this needs to go and where our hole needs to go. Okay. I've kind of gone back to the drawing board here. I, this, this just didn't going to work with the extension in this. The reason being that as you slide this back, this goes up and we need it to stay down. Actually in, in some respects, we would probably do better with a shorter one because this would rotate down even further. And I may do that yet. You can see that right now this brake rod is clear of everything. And I've got the new piece set up here. I've just got to tack it in. I think it's going to work okay where it is, but we might end up having to make a little bit longer rod. This is, everything that's here now is the stock stuff again. Uh, like I say, when I, when I did this extension to this rod here, then it rotated this pivot up to here. So that actually brought this up closer to the swing arm. And I was having more trouble with it. But I, I think I'm okay right now. You know, this is just the kind of stuff that happens when you're trying to make something like this. Uh, you know, some of the folks out there indicate that they like uh, to have this kind of content so that you can see, you know, that the things on YouTube, most of the time they're, they're sanitized to the point where, you know, you, you just think that whoever's putting, the, uh, putting on the show is perfect. And, that's far from the truth, and it's certainly far from my truth. I have to redo things a lot of times. Uh, just lucky I've got a bunch of these parts, and uh, 
I think what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and tack this in back here. That's kind of my next step. I had to uh, do a little work on my brake here, my brake uh, lever, but I it was bent. It was bent up. You know, every brake lever out there is, especially on a dirt bike, is bent up and over. So I had to bend this one down and and out, I think. So it's pretty well mocked up there. I put a couple extra holes in the uh, the new lever back here to give me some kind of adjustability. But at this point, let me get you around the other side. We'll take a look at it. Okay, I think you can see it there. I just need to I need to come in here and tack the uh, shaft to the new lever so that I've got it in a position. It doesn't really matter where it is as long as it's tacked on because it's splined on the brake side so you can put it anywhere you want it. But first thing we need to do is just, is just get it uh, close. And I, I've got a little washer behind it just to give me a little bit of space. So I think you, you can kind of see what I'm up against here. I, you know, who knows whether it's going to work. It looks, looks like it's going to. I thought the other one was going to. Okay, let me get the, let me get the welder hooked up and we'll tack it on. Okay, there's our, our new brake lever. And like I say, I put a washer behind here just to kind of keep that away, keep the arm away from the frame a little bit better. So let's go over and see how it fits. Okay, so this <clears throat> now essentially can put, be put pretty much anywhere we want it since it's splined out here. But I think about right there was where it was working good. And I had it pinned right there. And then our stay goes up. A lot of moving parts here. Okay, so I'm pulling that. I've got the uh, adjustment there all the way to the end of the rod. So, just pull it up and get our spring on there. see. Got that pulled up about all the way. Let's see if I can get that spring underneath that. There. I may actually have to move the lever back a little. You know, move move the arm back. It will, it comes into contact right there. Okay, I just moved it up a couple more teeth on the spline where this is more up and down. 
and now it's pulling into it. And when I pull, see it's already against the brake shoes there. So if I let go, see that's about right. That's about where it ought to be. Just a little bit of uh, adjustment taken on there. Yeah, yeah, that's going to work. That's going to work. Let me get the spring on it. Okay, I'm going to mark this. Uh, if you look, there's already a, a dimple right here. And I think there was one there. I didn't realize that. So I'm going to put a new one right here. And that way I'll know where to uh, set it up initially. Anytime you take it off. What I've got to do is I've got to turn the uh, the pin around. If you can see right here, it's a little close. The head needs to be on this side and then the cotter pin on the back side. It's like I say, it's pretty close there, but it'll be okay. So let me, uh, let me get this all taken loose here. Down with that, out with the arm. And I'm in the second hole. I think that's where I'm at. Right there. take the nut off so I can a little easier to get this brake pedal up where it needs to be. We've got our two dimples lined up. Let's go ahead and drop the bolt in there. And then we can hook up our arm and nut back here. Yeah. Should be good. Okay. I think that's going to work. So now I need to get the shocks pulled back off and we'll just move this up and down and make sure none of this stuff is going to bind on us. Okay, we've got our shocks off. So let's see where we end up now. Everything's still loose. So there we go. Yeah, it just comes down from there. Doesn't go doesn't go anywhere any way that is going to put us in a bind. So that should be good. Yep, I think we're good. Okay, next thing I need to do is I think you can see in here, this is where the uh, chain tensioner goes. And there's a little, uh, 
and a little tab broke off in there. It actually looks like this right here. And this is broke off and it's where the, where the spring hooks on to the swing arm so that you get the tension on it. And I'd forgot about that. So we've got, uh, we've got the brake. I think we've got everything fixed here and ready to go. But I've still got to repair that, that uh, tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off, pull the swing arm off again. And uh, we're gonna repair that. I just uh, spun one out on the lathe. So we'll be uh, sanding that off. I think there's a hole. If, it's, if there's no hole, then I'll have to cut this off just a little bit, but we'll uh, get it off and look at it and see what we need to do. Okay, here's where it's broke off. And I'm not sure whether they put a little hole in the swing arm or not. I don't know that I'll be able to tell when I get, get this down, but I'm gonna go ahead and grind it down. And this is the one I just made. And uh, I may have to, I left it a little long in case there is a hole. Uh, which I'll probably have to drill it out again, but that way I can use it that way, or I can cut this off just a little bit and uh, flush weld it just like they may have. So let me get it uh, sanded off and see where we're at on that. Okay, got her welded on, and the placement seems right, so we'll... We'll try this as soon as it cools off. I'm sure it will. Look like that's exactly where it needs to go to me. So uh, we'll let it cool off, get it back on, and give it a shot. Okay, there's our tensioner, and this is the piece that I had to put in there that was broken. Just holds the spring. And I got a little paint on the arm there and got her cotter pin in. So we should be ready to rock and roll. Okay guys, just got the tire swapped over to the, the, the rim I'm gonna use with the wheel. I eventually will probably change this over to a, uh, the steel wheel. But at this point, I'm going to have to order some spokes yet. So I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and clean this one up and use it for the time being. Uh, probably one of these days I'll never get to it. But that's where I'm at. So I just changed that over. And now we're going to kind of move our attention over here to the front end. <clears throat> now one thing that if you're doing something like this, this tank is not made for what we're doing for it. Uh, with, the, with the bigger forks, the wider uh, triple tree, you're gonna hit your tank here on, on uh, full tilt either way. So a couple things on this one are gonna work. Number one, I've got the tank slid back a little ways. And uh, I'll have to show you when I get in there, but we're gonna, we're gonna redo the front mount just a little bit so that it can't come forward any more than it is right now. And up here where your, uh, your limit is for your steering, we're gonna, we're gonna add to that a uh, about a sixteenth on each side. And what I've got in mind is uh, this right here. Actually, it's a little over a sixteenth, but not much. It's a piece of half inch square tubing. And I've squeezed it down so that I can put it right here. And then I'm just gonna tack it on the, on the bottom here. And that, those two things together will give us enough clearance so that we're not banging on the tank. And it all, it's only gonna take away about a 16th or maybe a little more than that uh, of steering lock. It's not, I don't think you'd even notice it, but that's, the two need to be done 
on this bike in order to keep from denting your tank if you happen to go down. So let me get to this and we'll get this tacked on and then we'll get on the inside and we'll modify the gas tank mount. I just want to show you again what we're dealing with here. This is your limit and this is a piece of half inch square tubing. It, I believe it's a point zero seven seven. Let me measure it. Yeah, the wall thickness is uh, point zero seven seven. So I've just cut that so that it'll fit that little stob sticking out there and I've squeezed it tight enough where it just it just snug on there and now I'm just going to tack it here on the bottom that should keep it from falling off okay that should hold that on there okay we'll get our triple tree back up there And like I say, this is a little bit longer. You could cut it off if you really needed to, re-thread it. Uh, I, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And I, like I said before, I build a spacer. So I put this on, and then this is the spacer that I built. And that just uh, kind of takes up the space there. Let me get you up here where I can kind of show you a little better. Okay, so you can see that I've got a little gap right here between the dust shield and all we need to do is just take that up. See if you, if you screw this on, the threads aren't far enough down and you'll just never get it tight. So there's the bottom. So that's the play you're dealing with right there. So all you need to do is find a little pack of washers, or in my case, I just uh, spun out a piece of aluminum. And of course that's gonna raise your, your uh, uh, handlebars a little bit, but uh, I, you know, it's, it's like a half inch. Uh, you'll get used to it. And now you can see where the new stop is in there. It just takes up about a little over a sixteenth of an inch more on each side. And when we get the modification done to the front uh, tank mount, you'll see the, that we've got plenty of room in there. And really, we haven't, we've just scooted the tank back as far as we can. And it actually looks good with the, with the, with the seat, the way it is. So that shouldn't be an issue. Then you just need to tighten this up a little bit. Remember they're tapered bearings now. So you just tighten it up a little more than what you want. And work them in a little bit. And then come back and loosen them up to what feels good to you. Yeah, I think that's good. And then we can get our top triple clamp back on and install our center bolt. And then we can go ahead and get our forks back in.
And I've got the handlebars back where they're gonna be. Just laid them on a rag here. And uh, you just wanna make sure all your cables are going over the top of the uh, triple clamp, uh, except for the uh, kill switch in, in my case here. And then if you get that on your lock, then you can go ahead and tighten that center bolt. Like that, and then we can uh, tighten the pinch bolt and get the handlebars back on. Okay, so we're coming back just about an inch from the front side of this to the front side of this and just going to tack it in right here and right here and then I can tap this up a little bit and tap this in a little bit uh, if I need to. Uh, not real sure. I'm going to have to get the gas tank up here and check this side. The other side, I pretty much got it. And this just kind of lifts up a little bit. And then of course you have your, your uh, big uh, strap or uh, insulator right here. Let that cool and we'll see how it fits. Okay guys, I, I went in here and kind of moved this forward a little bit I, and cut that tail off. I didn't need quite as much as I had and I think it's going to be just fine. Did the same the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, tank on. Let me get you a little closer. Okay. And we're still good. Okay, there's that side. And this side. And our gap looks good here. Seat still comes down and we can get our bolt in. Got the uh, rear mount, rear rubber pad in. I don't know if you've seen this since I finished it up, but there's their filter and the CDI box right there. And all the wiring comes right down into there also. So I think that's going to work okay.
And we'll just go ahead and get our fender mounted back up there. It's much easier this way than putting the wheel on first. this thing installed. Whoops, how to get the like that. Drop it down a bit. Okay, I still, I'm waiting on a pin for the brake. So when that comes in, maybe Monday, I'll have that. Okay, got our all our cables hooked up. I think this needs a strap, and we'll still be doing the the forks, doing putting new seals in, and everything. I believe I've got a clamp that goes here, and like I say, we need a pin down here that's coming, and we've got good clearance. Tanks fitting good, seats down and fastened. I think we're good. You got to do that, otherwise you'll end up with a couple of dents on both sides of your tank if you, could, if you do something like this. Okay guys, there you have it. We got our, our brakes hooked up. We've got the uh, uh, chain tensioner on, the, uh, the brake rod, the brake stay, all clear. Uh, everything should work just fine there. The brake pedal is up and running. We had to make uh, just a little bit of a, a new lever for that and it seems to be working okay. We uh, went to the front, we had to move the tank back uh, about a half inch and we put a piece in to the uh, steering, or steering limit block uh, to limit that about a sixteenth of an inch on both sides. And uh, we got the new wheel on, new tire on and uh, you know I, I hate to say it, but we're going to have to tear all, most of it down, back down to uh, uh, plates and bolts. We've still got to put new seals and overhaul the front forks. Uh, I think probably the back end is okay, except for I've got to plate the axle we made. Uh, I think that's it. We've got a little paint to do on the rear fender. A little body work yet, too. It, it needs... Uh, Needs a little of that before we paint it, but we got to wait on the weather to kind of uh, get better for that. But all in all, I think we're we're accomplishing quite a bit, and we're just about down to having to do the expansion chamber. And 
you know, I, like I said before, I've never done one. Well, I did, did a couple when I was a young man, but I wouldn't have uh, put any money on how good they were. Uh, I'm going to try to use Yamaha's uh, dimensions and try to do the best I can with this. Uh, it's going to be a low pipe coming down and coming under and kind of moving up, kind of like the uh, uh, early Suzuki, TM Suzuki's, the uh, uh, CZ's, uh, you know, a number of them did that. And I always thought they were cool. Uh, I'm not worried about ground clearance, got plenty of it now. Uh, of course, you know, you say that and you'll go out and bang the expansion chamber, but hopefully we'll be in good shape. So I'm real pleased where we're at, and uh, the next time you see this one, we'll probably be working on the pipe. But we've got a couple others that we need to work on in the meantime. So we'll probably be getting back on the F7, uh, on the Suzuki RM250, and uh, I've been doing a little tuning on the uh, 125MX, and I'll be getting back out there. It's pretty wet out there now, but uh, I just I can take that out here in my garden area, and I can I can get it pretty close, I think. So we'll see where that goes too. But anyhow, hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.